So hello everyone. Uh, thank you for being here physically and remotely. Um, it's uh, nice to talk just after George because in fact, this talk is about um, the opportunities we have with uh, our platform and the state of the market and more clear example on things we've seen on the uh, uh, server virtualization market. So first thing first, uh, I'm Oliver. I'm the VEX EOM co-founder. Um, I created Zen Orchestra project in uh, 2013 and started XCPNG in 2018. Um, if you want to see the slides, they are available online on page slash Zen 2022. So quickly before going on the more broad topic of, uh, you know, the market around the virtualization, a kind of quick recap on what is um, XCPNG. So uh, it's a, a friendly fork of Citrix hypervisor, formerly Zen server. Um, it's uh, entirely free and open source, um, and it's obviously based on Zen as its core. Uh, we are hosted inside the uh, uh, Zen project, and the one of the important differentiator uh, about XCPNG is just one component into a more global uh, solution with, as I said, Zen Orchestra, which is a kind of centralized console that you can use to manage all your machines from one web UI, CLI, API, and so on. So. Uh, like, yeah, centralized thing connected to your entire infrastructure. And also, um, <clears throat> very quickly regarding the uh, business model, it's very simple. It's, I would say, a la Red Hat. So it's uh, support per host and peer. So it's fully open source, uh, no paywalls, and so on and so on. So, what about the uh, trends we are seeing in the um, server virtualization market? Uh, that's the kind of the just the following after what George said. Um, so, it, we really had a kind of pivot this year. Uh, obviously, VMware with Broadcom was uh, truly something really big for, for this market, maybe one of the biggest events uh, in the recent years. But it's more like, uh, I would say, um, um, a kind of the latest news. But since the last two, three years, uh, Microsoft announced they will replace Hyper-V by Azure HCI, pushing people to the cloud. Uh, Red Hat is pushing for using other kind of platforms that are more application orchestration platforms like OpenShift. So somehow most of the biggest players in the on-prem virtualization markets uh, somehow left this market. So it can cause a kind of, you know, stars alignment for us as uh, with our solution combined not just with XCPNG, but the, the, the whole stack around it. So why? So <clears throat> right now, as we speak uh, all around the world, there's a lot of IT teams uh, trying to seek for alternative to their existing stacks. Um, and the reasons, there's three main reasons. The first one is uh, now people started to realize that being heavily dependent on one vendor is very risky because it's this big vendor, for example, VMware is trying to shift its uh, pricing policy and things like that, then they are kind of, you know, uh, uh, like that's in the water. So uh, they decided to try to seek for alternative uh, and they usually, when we talk with them a lot, uh, they are seeking for solution they can trust. Basically, solution where when they decide to invest into it, they won't have any big surprises. And it's not really easy to find that when you are not open source, obviously, because you can be acquired and things could happen and so on, product could be killed. So it's really uh, good to be open source in this situation. And also another thing which is, which struck me when I had discussed with a lot of people uh, running, for example, on old version of VMware, basically, if they just want to keep up, uh, meaning by that still have support, they have to move up to, um, let's say, more recent versions. But while doing that, they'll have to leave their previous pricing model. Uh, they need to get new hardware. Uh, they have features. They don't care for it, for it, but they pay for it. So all of these three points could be, I would say, somehow uh, mitigated by using a product which is open source and that's something we can answer as being fully open for XCPNG project, for example. Um, not just the code is open, obviously, but the project, the community, uh, we've got an upstream first philosophy, and the pricing is also uh, completely open and transparent. You know, it's not a contact us, it's just you have the pricing number of hosts, that's very simple. The other thing which is interesting with our platform is being integrated, meaning you don't have, you know, to assemble yourself a solution. It's already fully integrated, central API backup and so on. So that's a way where we could even compare some bits between VMware and XCPNG. Uh, some components could be compared in, in terms of architecture, helping people to make the transition.
Okay, so that's the theory. So uh, have we seen a real impact? So that's uh, where numbers are truly important. Just to show you a bit uh, this graph where you can see the uh, number of visitors we have on our websites. And um, if you can spot uh, those areas, uh, that's May and June. And that's exactly where the end of May, uh, Broadcom announced the acquisition of VMware. And that's not a coincidence. And it means this creates a new baseline to us because you know people seeking alternative, browsing websites, coming back and so on, starting to get information. So it, it truly had a, a visible impact. And the most visible one, uh, which is also truly interesting in the life of uh, our platform. Oh, double click. So this is um, on Zen Orchestra. If you want to try the solution, you can go on our website, enter your email, download it, try and so on. You can obviously go on GitHub, build it yourself. You have all the features. But on our website, you have a virtual machine with everything pre-installed, so you can test it very quickly, which is convenient. So you, you drop your email, and then you get the solution. So this is the list of um, unique emails on active accounts registered on our Zen Orchestra websites uh, since 2015. So we got mainly three trends that are really interesting to, to give you a, a, on what's going on on this market. So the first trend is where Xenoxcribe was only an interface or web management tool on top of Citrix hypervisor and Zen server. So the trend went a bit downward. Then in 2018, we decided to fork and create XCPNG. And as you can see, that's the trend number two. Uh, it changes a lot for Zen Orchestra projects because obviously now we got new people interested, uh, kind of momentum, more people in the community and so on. And the number three, uh, as you might guess, uh, the huge spike here is uh, last June. So it's another coincidence maybe or not that uh, a lot of VMware uh, users were suddenly seeking for alternatives. So it just means that at some point, a lot of people decided to go to search for other solution. It's not a guarantee that they will use it, but at least now they are aware there's other alternatives. So what we did with XCPNG since uh, the fork, so nights four years ago, uh, we, I think, achieved the, what we call the critical mass for the community. It means there's enough people uh, on forums, uh, on different channels we are using, to help each other without uh, our own assistance, which means self-sustaining, which is great. Uh, and as usual with, for example, social networks uh, and things like that, it's kind of snowball effect, you know, more you have people following you, more it's growing uh, faster and faster and so on. So we, we got a way uh, to reach a lot of people, which is um, interesting and also means that right now at this time, we have something big enough, I would say, to have some impact with the recent news on the virtualization market. Also, we managed to go into a, a guide which is used by a lot of execs uh, that are reading uh, this kind of market guide, for example, for server virtualization. So being put in, into those guides is truly helpful to not just convince the technical teams, but also people uh, who are deciding to adopt or not the platform. So it, it's also truly important to be able to, to convince the top management. Obviously, uh, uh, it's just not just the end of the journey, but just the start. Um, there's things we could improve since we have a new kind of, you know, uh, people coming to us, like a lot of VMware Hyper-V people. We have to adapt the way we are communicating with them uh, to explain what is open source. So it's a bit different. It, it's kind of my work, you know, changed a bit in the last, uh, last year or six months, but that's truly interesting. So obviously, uh, there's a lot of things to do outside even the technical aspects. Clearly, now we want to hire a lot of new people to be able to keep up for technical aspects, but even, you know, outside this. But we truly think there's a lot of room to succeed. So all of that is for our project. But what does this actually mean for the Zen project? And uh, this is where I think it's interesting. So to me, there's two consequences. The basic one, which are if we do nothing, there are still things, you know, in the package where if XCPNG is more and more present in the market. The fact is, first, when we communicate about our platform, we talk about Zen. And when you do that a lot, people start to uh, forget about, you know, the sentence uh, almost everyone heard in the last 10 years that Zen is dead. So it's harder and harder to believe because more people are hearing about recent stuff released and so on and so on. So the communication we, we do on top with our platform makes Zen is dead harder to believe, which is, I think, important. Also, it means as we build our uh, partner network, could be hardware, software, uh, integrators, researchers, 
then um, Zen is to more different places, more people are using it. So um, especially on the server virtualization market, it helps to be still relevant and still have, you know, um, tests, compatibility on different kind of hardware. Since we have a huge community, it means people will try to install Zen on very small machines, uh, Nux and things like that, but also, uh, you know, the corporate users that will use it on very big servers. So I think this kind of having a bigger user base could help just by being there at the Zen project. But beyond that, obviously, there's the, <clears throat> let's say, active consequences of the Zen project, where um, as the XCPNG goal, when we asked to enter inside the Zen projects, uh, inside the Linux Foundation, we wanted to really build the bridge between the, the end users uh, that are using the platform as, you know, a kind of turnkey product and the Zen developers. So that's why we want to bring uh, more things for the Zen project, like giving uh, a good feedback on what's used. So I will do that in a few slides uh, on the field. So what's needed for the users also maybe help on when we found bugs on our side to try to translate them and try to go uh, uh, deeper in investigation, maybe able to reproduce them. And then when we ask Zen level, we'll have something pretty easy to, to grasp, to identify, or even to see which commit, which regression uh, cause of the problem and so on. The other way is obviously to contribute to the Zen code base, which is uh, the obvious way to contribute. Uh, our team is growing and, and we are ramping up uh, on having more people to contribute to the Zen projects. It takes some time, but we are making some visible efforts right now. Um, we have some research and development project also that might help to finance some interesting projects uh, that could be uh, directly integrated in Zen. And I think the third point is also very important. Um, is contributing outside the code of the Zen project, but more globally on the project itself. Uh, like uh, George said uh, previously, uh, we have someone, uh, Mark, who's giving some of its time to help to track projects, uh, working with the release manager, uh, helping everyone to sort things out. Uh, and also the second thing is to have more communication about Zen, because as we've seen, uh, it's important. For example, if you do one blog post, I think three weeks ago been uh, in front page of Hacker News. It helped people to realize that Zen is there. They are doing a lot of security work. Uh, oh, that's great. That's important. And I think that's part of the active consequences for, for the Zen project while we succeed with our platform. So just to give you uh, a quick list of things we've seen, uh, obviously we can go into the details later if we want to make design sessions or things like that. So it's not meant to discuss that right now, but give you an idea on things we've seen, we've heard from people using a uh, virtualization platform. Um, we've seen an increase in it's, it's not ordered, so there's not priority whatsoever, but just, you know, an overview. Uh, Windows guests are requiring more and more uh, nested virtualization for a lot of different reasons. I'm not sure to understand exactly, but it, in the end, it's Hyper-V to, to enable some security features. And even Docker requires at some point to get uh, Hyper-V enabled and it doesn't work really well right now uh, uh, in Zen. Uh, VTPM stuff, so Windows 11 needs to get a TPM, so there's some work uh, done uh, at the, as we speak um, uh, in the Zen project. Uh, but in Zen in EFI, working with IPC, because obviously big, I would say, users that want to deploy, let's say, cloud providers that want to use Zen at scale, we need to have something, some ways to use it in an efficient manner. For example, we are partnering with a um, I think it's uh, Equinix uh, Metal. It's an offer where they just, you know, you can get access to servers and install whatever you want and having a way to simplify the installation of our platform on those machines could help to people to just, you know, I want to install Zen XPNG on this machine next and that's, uh, you know, instantiated, which is, I think, important to, to get more people using it. Host secure boot uh, via memory encryption. So that's more for those cloud provider, they want to use this solution internally. Uh, they want to have a higher level of isolation. And in general, they are, you know, uh, they like Zen for the security aspects. So continuing this work, I think is uh, a good thing. There's some issues around different things like PCI pathway with NVMe, uh, and obviously some work to have better integration of, let's say, modern metric stacks uh, uh, with Zen. So having compatibility with open metrics, being able to export to Prometheus, things like that. But again, uh, that could be discussed uh, in future sessions. Um, on, on our side, regarding platforms, so it's not directly related to Zen, but also it gives you kind of landscape of what people are expecting from a virtualization platform, a modern virtualization platform. 
Um, obviously, uh, tools to migrate from the existing solution, because if you have some manual scripts and so on, that's fine for people with five, 10 machines. But, you know, if you have hundreds of machines, you need something. So we are working on that. Um, storage part is more and more important. And as you can imagine, um, kind of hyperconvergence things or being able to connect to modern storage, talking to the API for storage directly. Um, in very short, the trend is uh, either manage the storage or either push it out and leave the storage, do whatever you have to, to do and keep the DOM zero small. That's why we're working, for example, on, on research projects using data processing units that are, you know, uh, kind of offload the main uh, CPU to do all the uh, IOPS we need to do the small card. Uh, more integration with containers workflow. So it's more a question of API and building blue around things, but that matters a lot for the end product. Uh, and on network side, there's also a lot of things. Uh, for example, in XCPNG, we've got an open V switch integrated inside the DOM zero, but we need to go even uh, beyond that. So we are starting to think about maybe network domains or um, orchestration of virtual firewalls and so on, because now on modern platform, people, uh, sysadmins don't want to configure themselves a firewall. They just want to be in their central virtualization console to say, I want to isolate this zone and this zone and then the platform is doing everything for you. So we can do that. It's a matter of glue, organizing, orchestration, but that's one of the important trends. Okay, so what's next? So with the Zen project, um, things we want to do with the Zen project is obviously contribute more uh, to the code, um, try to help on the bottlenecks we could maybe identify in the Zen project. We had multiple discussions during community meetings about the fact that uh, uh, reviewing is one of potential bottlenecks because there's a lot of people pushing stuff, but then you have to review it. Maybe the, the code that is, uh, for example, if you are not, you don't know the Zen project, you want to make a first contribution. Maybe you will have a lot of difficulty to do that, but also your code will be probably trash. And so you'll have to go back and go back. But this also has a tools on people doing the review. So having a good documentation could be a way to reduce that burden. So we'll be happy to, uh, to discuss that in a, in a design session and how we could help to, uh, to build something that could you know, get the process that would be easier for everyone. Um, continue to move forward in project tracking like we, do, we did with Mark, continue to improve the, the workflow, being, uh, you know, more efficient, more transparent and so on. And there is the last item which uh, could be, uh, you know, have to be thought which could be important is uh, trying maybe to discuss with uh, different companies contributing to the Zen project, but not at the developer level, but may maybe at the products or, you know, uh, uh, what, how you are using Zen and what do you want to, to do with Zen? And maybe talk with those people uh, in dedicated sessions to try to understand if maybe there's some synergies that could be done, or maybe there's, you know, oh, I also want to do this and, uh, and me too, me too, and so on. And then uh, decide to invest more resources, maybe, maybe hire people and so on. So that could also help to add a focus uh, from the companies uh, that now developers are talking together, but that's it. We want to kind of, you know, have a, a bigger parameter and, and having also product managers or I don't know how you can call them, but people that are actually using Zen in their product to understand a bit more how the project is working and if they can help uh, in some way. So on our side, we got a roadmap. We have plenty of things to do, obviously. Uh, but what, in my opinion, matters uh, is the fact that um, we'll... Uh, continue to try at least to transform this big opportunity we had. So we had the, the chance to start at CPNG four years ago. So we had our process, our building things and so on. So we are kind of ready to try to answer, I would say, the call. Um, and more we succeed, more we have resources to invest also into, into the Zen projects, not just into the platform. Because we are truly aware that Zen is the core of the product and we have to work with the Zen community to make things even better. So in conclusion, um, there is something happening right now uh, in the server virtualization world. Uh, it's, it's visible in our stats, it's visible with the number of people we are talking to every day, people coming from other platforms. And, and I think we don't have to be shy on the quality of the things the community built with Zen and, and uh, Zen Server, XCPNG and so on. Because uh, when you heard about horror stories people had with Hyper-V or even, even VMware, uh, then, I mean, it works. So the product is good. Uh, Zen is, in my opinion, one of the best candidates to fill that void left by, you know, VMware, Hyper-V and so on. We have the chance that 
Uh, again, the stars of the line, we have a good momentum with XCPNG already a bit before the Broadcom announcement, but we can use that momentum to, to convert those users. And it means that we truly want to share that success. Uh, with Zen, as I said, contributing to the code base, uh, help the projects, help the visibility for Zen, uh, grow the ecosystem uh, with vendors, partners, and et cetera. And so uh, that's why we have some session this afternoon to, to talk about some of those topics. And uh, if you want to, uh, after this talk uh, today, to, to you know, come to, to talk about anything related to our platform, we'll be truly happy to, uh, to discuss that together. So that's it for me. Uh, if you have questions, uh, feel free to go ahead. Thank you. No question. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have a, a break now until 10.30. Um, so the next section will be, uh, there'll be two different rooms. So I'm told that the original plan was to try and partition these rooms, but apparently that takes a long, like it's too much of a hassle. Um, well, anyway, so, uh, so uh, the, the, the current current plan, although it, it may change because Robert's giving me skeptical looks here, is um, for the Fitzwilliam room to be moved to uh, a different place on the other side. So I just I think just keep an eye out for that. Um, if you're virtually, then just come to the, then virtually fine. You're going to do the thing. Um, great. Well, thank you. And uh, rem rem remember to send me your, your slides in PDF form if you haven't already. Um, and we'll see you at ten thirty.